टाइम we'll see that the gray black color of iron has been converted into reddish brown color that is iron oxide uh if we take uh, our home examples uh, food is raw we cook it color changes taste changes even the state also changes correct so change is what is life or life is change so let us start with change and let us see what are the different types of changes uh, which are possible now a change can be of two types that is physical change or chemical change if you see over here on board i have mentioned the properties different aspects of a physical change and of a, also of a chemical change now let us understand what is a physical change so friends there are physical properties like shape size and state when these change uh, these properties of a object or a substance changes physical properties of a substance changes then we say the substance is undergoing a physical change how for example suppose i have a piece of paper suppose um, my hand this hand is a piece of paper this is a flat paper this is a flat paper if i fold this way the shape changes this was flat it has become into l shape now if i uh, change its shape again it becomes a cylinder shape okay now this uh, object this substance this paper was originally also a paper i have changed the shape but it's, it's still the paper it means if you change the physical properties like shape size and state it means no new substances are formed for example you take a ice cube from your freezer correct now that water in form of ice cube is actually a solid but if you melt that or if you keep that uh, piece of ice in a plate or in a bowl for a longer time it will turn into liquid it was water initially also when it was in solid state it is now water again when it is in liquid state you have changed the state of that uh, amount of water it means you have changed the physical properties but still the originality of the substance remains the same so it means what is a physical change if you change the shape size or state that is physical properties then it means it is undergoing a physical change for uh, the example of size let us take uh, again the paper example if you take a piece of paper and if you tear it into n number of pieces that one big piece of paper was also the same substance and those small tiny pieces of paper are also the same substance the originality has not changed the only thing which you have changed is shape and size correct if you take a candle if you melt a candle uh, do remember melting of a candle and burning of a candle are both different things if you melt a candle that long cylindrical form of candle has been converted into a heap of uh, melted wax correct it means you have changed the shape and size of wax but the wax is still the same it means whenever you change shape size and state of an object or a substance it means you are changing the physical properties and the substance is undergoing a physical change then what is a chemical change suppose you take 100 ml of milk in a bowl and uh, you take another 100 ml of say curd from from a milk in another bowl if you see from the top both look white both look similar but if you try to touch uh, this bowl which contains milk and if you try to touch this bowl which contains curd then you will find that this in, this one is more flowing but this is a bit uh, stuff 
it means you have changed the internal properties of that particular substance so what is a chemical change when the internal properties of a substance changes then we say the substance has undergone chemical change that's what i have written when the internal properties of a substance change then we say the substance has undergone a chemical change now what is the next point see when you have taken a piece of paper and if you have uh, you know converted into n number of small pieces it is still paper which means no new substance has been formed if you take a piece of log wood log and if you cut into n number of pieces that small uh, pieces are still wood that big single piece was also wood it means no new substances forms when a substance is undergoing physical change but if you remember that uh, milk case it was originally milk but it has been converted into curd and curd is a new substance the milk has lost its its own originality and curd has been formed it means new substances are formed in a chemical change for example if you burn a piece of coal then definitely you can see ashes are formed and also carbon dioxide gas has been released that is c plus o2 gives co2 and ashes are also formed now you can cannot combine co2 and ashes to uh, you know retrieve back that piece of coal it means new substances are formed and at the same time most of the chemical reactions are irreversible most of the chemical reactions are chemical changes are irreversible whereas most of the physical changes are reversible how if you have taken a piece of paper if you fold it this way you can again unfold the piece of paper uh, in the same uh, way it was so a uh, physical change can be termed as or most of the physical changes can be termed as reversible for example that uh, we example we have taken of ice if you melt a piece of ice into water you can again freeze into uh, that uh, solid form of ice okay it means most of the physical properties are reversible whereas most of the chemical changes are irreversible you cannot convert carbon dioxide and ashes you cannot combine carbon dioxide and ashes to form back coal again so process is a irreversible process also when we say that a substance is going undergoing a physical change then no chemical reaction has been involved why because new substance has not been formed we cannot say that a chemical reaction is occurring when a substance is undergoing a physical change but like a, like i have given you the example of uh, burning of a coal piece coal burns in presence of oxygen to produce co2 and also ashes left behind it is a reaction it is a chemical reaction so whenever we talk about a chemical change we always say that the substance uh since it is going undergoing chemical change a chemical reaction has been involved into it correct now we have talked about changes we have seen seen changes changes can be of two types that is physical change and chemical change now if we try to learn more about chemical change since it is involving a chemical reaction then we can see how we can determine whether a chemical reaction is occurring or not there are four factors because of which we can say a chemical reaction is occurring or not i will try to elaborate that let us first uh, understand what are the different four factors on the basis of which we can say whether the uh, substance is undergoing a chemical change or and whether a chemical reaction is occurring or not the very first uh, factor is change of color if a substance is in x color say any color white blue red and the color changes then we say a chemical reaction is taking place for example if you see anhydrous copper sulfate it is white in color but if you dissolve anhydrous copper sulfate into water it colors changes it means a chemical reaction is taking place for example if you take a iron piece it is actually gray black in color but if you keep that nail or iron piece into a humid environment for a longer time a humid environment means there is water or oxygen or air present in the atmosphere if you keep that iron piece in a humid environment for a longer time you will find that a reddish brown 
color of substance has been formed on the outer surface of that iron piece. So the gray black color has changed into reddish brown color. Now this change of color tells us that a chemical reaction is taking place. So the very first factor that is change of color helps us to determine whether chemical reaction is taking place or not. I will show you on the board with the help of different different re reactions and equations. Before that I am illustrating all the four factors. The second factor is change in temperature. Now suppose you have a beaker, you pour some acid into it, you pour some base into it. This particular reaction is called neutralization reaction which we will study as we move along in this chapter. This particular reaction is neutralization reaction. So in a beaker you are pouring some acid, you are pouring some base. You mix it thoroughly, after some time you will find that the base has become a bit hot. You, you can feel that on your uh, palm or on your hand. So this change in temperature is actually telling us that a chemical reaction is taking place. The very second factor that is change in temperature which also helps us to determine whether a chemical reaction is taking place or not. The third factor is change in state. I have mentioned this example earlier also while taking uh, explaining a chemical change. If you take a piece of coal, it is in solid state. If you burn that piece of coal, it will convert into ashes and carbon dioxide which means the carbon which was absorbed in that piece of coal which was solidified, it was in solid form has now been converted into gaseous form. This is change of state and it helps us to determine that a chemical reaction is taking place in this particular example and many examples like this uh, burning of coal. Also burning of wax like I have mentioned earlier also there is a difference between melting of wax and burning of wax. Melting of a wax is a physical change we cannot say that a chemical reaction is occurring in that particular case but burning of wax is a chemical change and we can say since that wax which was in solid form has now been converted into gaseous form we can say this change is a chemical change and a chemical reaction has been involved into it. So the third factor is change in state. Now what is the fourth factor? Let us understand. If you take a beaker, if you pour some HCl into it, hydrochloric acid into it, dilute HCl into it rather and if you drop some pieces of zinc granules into it, solid pieces of zinc granules into it, you cover that uh, beaker or the flask with the help of a cork you uh, provide a connecting tube uh, going inside into the beaker and the other end free. After some time what you can see that if you bring a burning matchstick at the open of, end of the connecting tube then it will give you a pop sound. It is a specific test to check whether the hydrogen gas is present or not. In general, if you want to check whether a gas has been evolved or not, if you pass that connecting tube, the open end of the connected tube in a say a flask containing water, bubbles will be formed. So the fourth factors become whether a gas has been evolved or not. If a gas has been evolved in a process, then we can say a chemical reaction is occurring. So there are four factors that is change in color, change in temperature, change in state and whether a gas has been evolved or not in a process. These four factors helps us to determine, helps us to say that a chemical reaction has been involved in the process. Now let us see on the board, let us see how we can write equations for all these four factors.